year that I've chosen is deeper. All right, so I trust that each one of us will have a, a strong desire to want to go deeper. Deeper in the Lord, deeper in His love, deeper in the Word of God, deeper in our relationship with one another. All right, so this is the challenge. Uh, for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to share with you this uh, message on deeper. Finally, is in union with God. Amen? Our, our, our deeper life is in Jesus. It's to be one with Jesus. It's to be drawn closer to Jesus. It's to love Jesus and have the heartbeat of Jesus. All right, so the deeper is just not coming deeper to one another, but it's really deeper in our union with the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Uh, and also introduce this term, radical resilience. Maybe common to you, maybe not. The word resilience means you're very uh, strong, you're very, uh, very able to overcome, resilient. And not only resilient, you, you want to be radical, you want to be really uh, make a difference in our, our generation. So the theme is deeper in, in 2024. And the goal is radical resilience. I want us to be strong in the Lord. That no matter what happens, no matter what happens in our life, economy, World War Three, whether we are bankrupt, whether we have problems, wherever we face, all right, we have radical resilience. We will not give up, we will fight on, and then we will really be victorious in the name of the Lord. So that's the idea, all right? The goal is radical resilience. And there are four global crises we are facing. Many, in fact, many. You look at the, the news, every time you, see, you open the news, there, there are many crises we face. But I want to highlight this four, four crises that I think is very crucial. Sometimes we don't realize in Malaysia we are peaceful. Life goes on to many of us, average, middle class. All right, we're okay. We still celebrate Christmas. We still have Chinese New Year. And Chinese New Year, very noisy. Huh? All the crackers. When your economy is good, you have crackers. Huh? Economy good, no good. <laughs> the crackers less and less. Huh? Looks like the economy, I mean, the people are still thinking everything is fine huh? Everything is okay, la. we're all right, la. but we don't realize that there are many crises we may be facing. Four main crises, uh, four global crises. First of all, it's climate crisis. Again, uh, this is, a, this is a, 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 a reminder that we are really having a, a climate crisis, uh, climate change crisis. All right? uh, the ecosystem in, our, in the world globally is destroyed in many areas. Uh, that's why we have flood, that's why we have... Uh, uh, for food shortage, that, that's why we have many, many, many issues in our life because the climate change, the, the carbon dioxide, the ozone layer, and go on and on and on. They have got, uh, they have got seminars, they have conferences after conferences, but nothing really happened. Talk only, huh? A lot of things happen, but really, when it comes to actually preserving the, 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 the climate change, it's the, it's the bottom line is dollars and cents, all right? And people are not willing to do that. All right, that's why we have fires, we have flood and typhoons. Not only in Malaysia, you know, all the countries. You look at the, the developed countries in England, in Spain, in France, in Australia, you just look at it. it it's not natural, not during our generation, right? So flood is there, the climate change, uh, I don't know, whatever, the, the, the whole, whole uh, physical, and typhoons, etc., and fires, okay? And pollution of sea, air, and land, and water. Pollution is terrible, all the plastic and, and everything. We hear it very often. So climate change is a crisis of our planet. And it looks like we're not able to solve it. It looks like people are not interested. It looks like all the politicians come and conference, and they talk, 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 talk. When it comes to really changing our economy, you have to, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you cannot do that, oh, you cannot, I'm sorry. All right, but this is a crisis we are facing. I heard... Uh, 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 a lot of young people in our generation, they are afraid they will not live very long. And some of them commit suicide, you know, because they are so scared looking at the climate problem, they know we are in for trouble. All right, so there, this is a very crisis. All right, then the second is a crisis of, of poverty. Our oh, poverty in this, in this world is, is getting from bad to worse. All right, uh, unequal distribution of wealth and power. As I said, uh, like countries that are very rich are very rich, getting richer and richer and richer, but the poor are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. So the rich countries, no problem. Like whatever happens, they're okay. They can still spend. They can go and buy. They can go shopping. But the poor ones are really suffering. The real common people. All right, because of the unequal distribution of wealth and power. 
uh, this is a, a crisis, uh, concentrated on a tiny minority of the rich people. All the money in the world is only a very tiny minority, I don't know percent, maybe 10 percent or what, it's only a very small percentage controlling the world. Right? That's some, of, some, of the, some of the rich guys you may know, huh? Elon Musk, the rich, world's richest man in the world. Huh? 180,000 billion US dollars, 180,000 billion US dollars. Wow. You, cannot, you, can never, you can build a rocket and send himself to space. La. You can have all kinds of program. La. And then, of course, the electric car and many, many things. Elon Musk is quite a, quite a brilliant guy. Huh? So, 180 billion to his name. The other one is Bill Gates. 119 billion. Next. Like, no, not next. Now. One of the, the, the ones we know. Bill Gates. And then, of course, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook guy. Huh? One is Microsoft. And then, 103 billion US dollars. You look at the homes, look at their. The, uh, the facilities that they have is fantastic. Just look Google and see. So this is uh, the rich, super, 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 super rich. Huh? But the poor, very poor. The people are famine and dying, no food to eat, etc. So crisis of poverty. All over the world, we are facing this. Um, Malaysia, so far so good. We are strong middle class, but it's moving. If you're not very careful, if you fall against the government, whatever it is, we will be in real trouble. All right? Third crisis is a crisis of okay, extreme poverty. One quarter billion, extreme poverty. One quarter billion of the people, population of the world is extreme poverty. I mean, you yeah, are just surviving only. One quarter billion. Thirdly is a crisis of peace. We all know that, right? Wars. Huh? This is the war. We are in a war. I don't know, only, only last year, I think. Only last year, there is so much intense warfare. Okay, we know this warfare right now, right? Uh, uh, more weapons increase killing power, <laughs> more sophisticated weapon, la, they got all kinds of things invented, la, and uh, many people uh, create weapons to sell during wartime. So th- when war comes, they're very happy <laughs> because they can make money out of war. Right? More weapons increasing uh, 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 killing power. And World War Three is so imminent, you know, because you know, Israel, Gaza, Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, North Korea, and you can go on and on, Syria, Lebanon, Lebanon and many countries. Uh, and in the verge, or even the midst of it, even in Southeast Asia, we got we got uh, Myanmar internal problem la. We got uh, many other countries. They are very tense. All right. So there's a crisis of peace in our generation. The, there is there seems to be no peace, even though we should have peace by now. Even though everything should be okay now. We are growing. We are prospering. We are okay. We are more educated, but the world is filled with tension. Especially in the Middle East. Okay? Especially now with the Israel Gaza warfare, and Israel is going to wipe out uh, Gaza, and then the Lebanon will join in, the Hezbollah will join in, and then the Jordan will join in, and Egypt will join in, and Saudi will join in. The Middle East crisis is a really hot issue now. It's a matter of fact, you will spill over anytime now. Because Israel doesn't seem to be stopping whatever they are bombing, all right? So, and also, the, the, the world is set on fire, divisions, there are a lot of divisions in the world, sex, uh, of racial division, gender and transgender and social division, economic division, and religious division, the world you are facing, all right, a lot of divisions of, of religion and social and, and climate and, um, and, and status in life, a lot of crisis because people are just not able to unite together. If you can just unite and love and peace, the world will be peaceful, really. There's no need to fight in the 21st century. You've got enough to eat. We are educated. Those who have gone through First, Second World War, those are survivors. Huh? I mean, they're terrible to go through a world war, isn't it? But now, most of us have never gone through Second World War. Have anyone? No. We don't know what is war- war- warfare, you know? How tough it is when, when the war came and people are dying, nuclear bomb, etc. But this generation, no, never no, read about it, only different, go through it. Right? So it's a crisis of peace and it looks like more wars and more and more wars. More and more fighting. Everybody now wants to fight already. Everything you don't like, you just fight and conquer. Because ego, you are hurt. Uh, uh, Putin said, I, I will never surrender. No, no, Putin said, uh, the, Zelensky said, I will never surrender to, to Russia. And Putin said, no, Russia cannot be defeated by this small country. 
No matter what, we will fight until that they die. If they don't die, we die. All right. So this ego, huh? the ego. And then God, this, this Hamas and Israel, right? it's also ego wars, isn't it? Here comes this, this big Israel, want to hunt them everybody. And Hamas is so difficult. Terrorism, etc. So a lot of countries are fighting because of their ego. It's ego problem. If only we can humble. If only we can say sorry. If only we can say, never no, mind, it's okay. There will be no, no, no war. Right? So it's a crisis of peace. All right? So this year is a very crucial year, I tell you. Very crucial year because it will spill, it may spill over the Israel Gaza war. And then China will come in, then India will come in, then, then Russia will come in. All kinds of nations will come in because they all come on, come on, come on. I, I help you, you help me, all right? So there's a crisis of peace you're facing. All right, and then fourthly is what we call the crisis of religion. Ah, very interesting. We, we think that religion is the answer to world peace. Okay. Of course, religion is not the answer, right? So many religions are. Huh? You've got, you got the cross there, you've got the, the Muslim there, you've got the Buddhist there, I don't know, the star is Israel, then there's Muslim, what is that one? That one on the, on the right, I don't know what it's, Mormonism maybe. All right, so there are many religions in the world that seemingly, seem, seemingly supposed to bring the world together, but religious is a fight. Huh? Religious is a fight, all right? Uh, uh, in fact, many religions are, are, are sidelined. We are not really in the main. We are sidelined and, and, and we, we are, we're guilty by standard. We just watch only. What can we do? The world is like this, man. How can we get, get involved? All right? And, and the failure of the institutional religions to bring transformation. That is one of the problems. Uh, 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 whatever religion, including Christianity, if, if, if it's just an institution, if it's just a religious organization, if it's just some kind of hierarchy thing, if, if it doesn't bring transformation of our hearts, uh, religion also is no use, right? You, you can go to church, you can go to the mosque, you can go to the temple. When you go out of the mosque and temple or church, we fight. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we, we scold one another. There's no transformation. Our life is not transformed. Our marriages are not transformed. Can you, can you, sometimes it's so, so sad, isn't it? Here we are Christians, we cannot... Have a good marriage. What kind of gospel are we preaching? Our family, all right? We come to church, yeah, we worship God. What about our families? If there's no transformation in the family, what kind of religion? No, no transformation in our home life. All right. So it's a failure of the institutional church to bring transformation. The really hearts that are changed. Only God can change our hearts. Religion cannot change. All right? So we, we, the failure of the institute to bring transformation and also religious extremism. The worst kind of people are the religious extremists. Right? The Pharisees, la, uh, I don't know, what do you call that? The Muslim people, what do you call it? The, the Imam, la, wherever it is. Huh? So they, they are, they, they've got a one-track mind. Uh, every religion got extreme, even Christians. We have those crusaders also, we have the problem. La, the KKK, Ku Klux Klu, Klu, Klan. Uh, extreme people who have no real love for God. Uh, judgmental. Uh, religious people are very judgmental. They are very merciless. Jihadis and greedy also. Actually, I was told, I don't know whether it's true. Uh, don't quote me, but they said the Hamas guys are uh, millionaires. Their money is outside. They are not in Gaza. All right? The leaders. Uh, so they are religious. They, they seem to be very extremist. But actually, they are, they, they are just a pretense. So we can have this kind of religiosity. We know what to do, what to sing, what to go, where to go. When it comes to really our heart's transformation, we are not that humble, gentle, and loving. So the crisis of religion is that religiosity will not bring world peace until there is transformation of our heart. And that only comes from the work of the Holy Spirit. All right. So these are the four crises. Crisis of, what's the first one? Climate. Crisis of, first the crisis of the planet, second crisis of the... Huh? Peace. Number three, peace. Number two is what? Boleh, boleh belakang ga? Ado. Crisis of peace. Number two. Crisis of poverty. Huh? All right. 
we are, we are moving into it in Malaysia. So if the economy doesn't pick up, uh, we all don't know how many trillion dollars, and then we've got, got this kind of problem, a political problem. We want to get money from Daim and Mahathir. We we'll never get that from them. I don't think so. Anyway, so we have crisis of poverty, we have crisis of peace, we have crisis of uh, religion. All right. Of course, you, you, the most important is, is your union with Jesus. Uh, and hopefully, the union of Jesus will bring transformation in our life. All right. So these are four crises we face. And so we want radical resilience. The challenge for this year, 2024. Uh, the, the, the radical means the root. Ah, the root. One, nine, two. Root. Ah, any root. Radical. The, the, the root must be strong. It must be biblical foundation. It must be in Jesus Christ. That radicalness. All right. The radical. All right. This idea of, of going to the roots, going deep, and going beneath the surface. You, you never know a person. It's, you say that it's still the illustration I saw it in the Facebook. Two carrot plant, huh? one carrot, small, small carrot, but the leaf very big. Huh? Since we're on, on top of the surface, the, the, it's very but inside a small carrot. Whereas there's a big carrot there, but the leaf is small. <laughs> All right. So we think that small, small, little leaves, not fruitful, but inside is deep. So we cannot judge anybody, ah, you're fruitful. Deep inside us, only God knows and we know ourselves. So, so it has to be depth. It's our commitment, it's our work with God, it's our own prayer life, etc. It's going beneath the surface, only God knows. All right, so we cannot know. All right, so this is important. Radical. Re- re- so, so it comes through contemplation. Uh, paying deep attention to the deep dimensions of our life. It is to meditation, it is to contemplation, it is to be silent before the Lord. It is spending time with the Lord, then we go deeper in the presence of the Lord. So coming to church alone does not necessarily mean you be deeper. Of course, it's good to come and listen to the word of the Lord, to be challenged, to be inspired. But finally, when you go home, it's your, 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 your relationship with God is you and God. Your personal life. We want to have radical, deep resilience. All right, go on to the idea of, of this resilience. Re- re- resilience is the capacity to withstand and recover from hardship and, or difficulty. When we say a person is very resilient, that means he's able to uh, face hardship or difficulty and get up. A very resilient man. Like this plant here, huh? this flower. Look at this beautiful flower. Wow, hard life was. Look at it, it's, it's rocky soil, but still the flower is able to rise up in the midst of dryness, etc. That's what resilience is. The capacity to withstand and recover from hardship. We must be ready for hardship in the year 2024. Okay? So we've been talking about, talking about it, and so far so good, we are all right. But it's going to come, all right? And uh, resilience is the ability to spring back into shape after being beaten down or knocked over. Somebody beat you, you're, you're knocked down, uh, but you get up again. All right, that resilience, we want to talk about this in, in, in this year, 2024. Like, good story. Uh, it's the ability to endure and grow and thrive through adversity. Ability to endure tough, painful sufferings. I think many of us, including myself, we, we never go through real suffering, world, world, world war, famine, and, and hardship, with bankruptcy, etc. We, we, many of us haven't gone through to endure an adversity in our life. It's coming. It's coming in the last days. Tribulations and famine and earthquake is going to come. So we, have to, we, we must be able to endure. We must have the ability to endure hardship. That's why we talk about resilience. And two, two, the, the two examples I have is Job. Job went to tremendous suffering. You know the life of Job. He's bankrupt, children die, his, 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 his whole, everything in, in Job's life, uh, suffering. His body was full of balls. And what did Job do? He rise up. He start all over again. And God bless him. Right? Tremendous. So we want to be Job in the last day. And also the New Testament church. The New Testament church went through hardship, went through persecution, went through martyrdom. They were thrown in the lions, in the, in the Coliseum. They were martyred. Then they rise up. Right? So that's what resilience. This is radical resilience. I, I trust this year. God will help us have radical resilience. All right? Putaong. You know what is Putaong? 
Chinese people, no? You hit this guy, the guru. Ah, this is Puta Ong. All oh, right, this is Puta Ong. You know, no? Uh, Korean have also, huh? You, it's a rubber thing. Pum, come. Pum, come. Can never die one. Huh? So it is, it is, we want this kind of resilience. We want to put our own. Who fall down? Who kind of, we never fall down. We always get back again. All right. So we, know, we want to have radical resilience. Uh, in Proverbs, it says, the righteous man falls seven times and rise again. He's like, put our own. Uh, righteous man. Fall down seven times. Get up. Fall down. Get up. You never get fed up of falling down. He will get up. You will never defeat him because he's put our own. Uh, I don't know why it's inside made of like a solid weight there. Right? They just come up. All right. So we need that res, 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 radical resilience. Now, how trees survive in hurricane in Florida? Uh, you know, when a hurricane comes, the tree, those strong trees will be uprooted. If they're strong, right? If they're strong, if they don't have strong roots, huh? it will be uprooted. But if the tree is like a palm tree, oh, they are flexible. They are, what do you call that? Huh. They are able to go and fall and come. Okay, this is one, 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 one way of surviving. But this tree, uh, this particular tree is called gumbo limbo tree uh, in Florida. It's a very special one. Not only you, you won't fall. Uh, uh, the gumbo limbo tree, it, it lets its branches break off. When, when hurricane comes, the branch will break off. You break off, you break off until there's nothing only. Finally, he left the tree trunk. Okay, so during hard times, the gumbo limbo tree just let go of everything. Lah. Never mind the tree, uh, the leaves break or so, never mind. Everything is gone, but the trunk is still there and strong. And after everything is gone, you break again. Okay, the, 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 the lesson we learned from this gumbo, gumbo limbo tree is this uh, he let go of everything that's not essential to focus on life. So the essential is the trunk, essential is the roots. As long as that is there, never mind. The leaves let it. It's okay. Gumbo limbo. <laughs> right? Gumbo limbo. Okay, this is the idea of radical resilience. All right? uh, what, are, what are the non essentials to focus on? The non essential during the pandemic. I think, I think we learned a lot of lessons during the pandemic, right? A lot of non essentials. Shopping. Huh? So good during the pandemic. No need shopping. Huh? Save a lot of money. No need to go to office. So. Work from home. All right? Uh, don't need to buy clothes, extra clothes, unnecessary. Food also, we are okay. Grab can come, whatever it is, you can. Uh, and approval, security, power, and control. These are the things. A lot of times, they hinder us. So, things that are non essentials, let go of them. If you want radical receipt, like this gumbo, when, when hard times come, when you don't have money, we cannot buy and sell, when there's uh, no oil, the, the chain, the, the ch supply chain is disrupted. And then the world gets into chaos. They got nothing. Then non-essential, we just let go. Lah. Let go. Uh, sometimes our, our attitude, we want to be approved. We want to be men pleaser, so let go. We want to have security. No security in money or bank. Security is in God, right? So let go of security. Let go of power and control. We, don't, we cannot control anymore. Let go, let go. All right, what happened? First All right. <laughs> oh, my. All oh, right, all oh, right, okay, essential. So these are non-essential. There, there are a lot of things in our life that we are, we are trying to plan this year. And there are many things we have to let go, things that are not essential. Okay, and, and what are the essential things? Essentials, all right, the important things in our life, essentials. Contemplation is essential. But the ability to sit down and, and, and think and, and relate with God and spend time in the presence of God and let Him minister to us, that is uh, essential in life. Uh, our faith, hope, and love is essential, right? You must have faith. You must have love. You must hope. If you lose your faith, you're gone. If you don't have the love, it's gone also because the important thing is love. And if you don't have hope, you're also gone. The Bible tells the three uh, last forever. So our faith in God must never, we must never lose faith in God. We must have, always have hope in God that no matter what happens, God will be with us. Our hope is in God, not in men or institution or in money. And then our, our, our love, important thing is the love of God. Love God and love one another. So these are the essentials. 
Marriage is essential. Let me tell you. You must treasure your love, your husband and wife, as much as possible. That's essential. If marriage breaks down, your, your children, your home breaks down, your family breaks, everything is gone. So your marriage is very important. All right? And then your, your Christian, the family and Christian community is, is essential. It's coming together, not just coming to church. We are a community. We are, we are a community of faith. We're concerned for one another. We pray for one another. And we support one another. And we worship together. This is essential. I, I cannot be on my own and pray on my own and then contemplate. But we have a community of faith. It's very it's essential. And eternity is essential. Everything, mortality is right before us. One fellow die, another person die. Who is next? <laughs> Who is next? Could be you, could be me. Right? But eternity is essential. We know that we, we have eternity in, in God. We are ready to meet our Creator. And the presence of God is essential. So these are some of the things I can think of. Uh, and when doing the typhoon come or the hurricane come, throw away the non-essentials and look for the essential. Right now, develop the essentials. Put attitude and perspective in our life. We need the essentials. We can be so busy that we have no time to contemplate, no time to seek God. No time for us to grow. All right, so the gumbo limbo tree is when typhoon, hurricane come, or let everything go. Not essential. You survive on, like lockdown. Your basic necessity, good enough to survive. But continue to develop the essentials. All right. Hard and dangerous time, 2024. Uh, we are living destructively with our planet, as I mentioned, destructively, living dangerously and divisively. Uh, with one another, and often delusionally within ourselves. All, all, all this we have covered just now, all the four Ds. We are living destructively with our planet. We don't know how to really recycle and make sure our thing, so much of damage. Uh, dangerous and divisive. Dangerously living and divisive. Uh, all kinds of division, religious and genders and sex and race, etc. And then often delusionally within ourselves also. We don't really have peace with God inside us, all right? So this is a, this is a danger, right? Uh, so explore together the radical resilience so that we can become thermostat or right, thermometer. Right? So that we can set the standard. You know what's the difference between thermostat and thermometer, right? Thermometer measures the temperature. Therm thermometer go up and down. Thermostat, you set the temperature. Whatever you want, all right? And then you maintain it. So if you are therm thermometer, I uh, feel up or down, la. oh, economy no good, la. friends no good, la. people don't love me, la. I get rejected, la. Oh, yo, 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 yo. all this thermometer, no. <laughs> up and down, no, you're not happy. But thermostat is you are consistent with God. You set the standard, holiness, God's love for the Lord, uh, our, our devotion with God and, and family life, marriage, la. all these are standards we have to keep. We can talk about it and preach about it, but we must set a standard. So it's important to be a thermostat, all right? We, 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 we become thermostat, we set the temperature. And set the example, not only set the temperature, set the example of contemplation, depth, wisdom, and love and peace. So as believers, during hard times and difficult times, we set the example of depth, that we have depth. Nothing will shake us. Uh, depth of wisdom, wisdom, all right? Not like, like the people running in there with all kinds of of things that they chase after, no wisdom. And love, set the, the standard of love, one another, no matter how difficult. And set that standard of peace. No matter what happens, I have peace with God. My contemplative life, my stillness, my prayer life gives me peace, no matter what happens. Even if everything fails, right? So we, we need to be a thermostat, set the temperature. Rather than, than just sinking into fury and fear and denial and despair during our time. It's going to come. Let me tell you, I prophesy. It's going to come. The difficult times will come when the wars and famines and earthquakes. It's going to come. Fear and fury and denial and despair will come in our generation. You are so close. It's the age. We're in the age of... Some of us don't even realize we are so close to all these dangers. Alan Boris, Boris quote, I like, I, this is one of the things I saw in the, the Facebook. The richest wealth is wisdom. Think about it. Uh, the strongest weapon is patience. The best security is faith. And the greatest tonic is laughter. 
think about it. It's in, very interesting. So how rich are you? The richest wealth is wisdom, not money. Not like uh, Microsoft, what's his name? Uh, Bill Gates and uh, Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Okay, they have rich. Well, I, I wish I can be a million, billion air. Uh, no, million air, nothing. Billion air, okay. <laughs> now, ringing as of no use. One US dollar and US also going to fall down. Oh, it's not so much of how much money you have. The, 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 the richest wealth is wisdom. Wisdom, how to live life, have attitude, positiveness. You know how to conduct yourself, no matter what happens. Wisdom is the richest. If you have wisdom, you are richer than all the richest millionaires. Amen. The richest is wisdom. The strongest weapon is patience. Ah, it's not the bombs, ah, not all those nuclear bombs, etc. No, no, it's patience. Man, patience. One another, really. Sabah. This is the heart of a marriage. You don't have patience. You cannot get Husband, what's your quarrel or not? Huh? So you must have patience with one another. Patient in our society, patient in our government, patient in all situations, no matter what happens. God is in control, that's patience. So the strongest weapon that we have is patience. And many of us don't have, including myself, oh, we're so in, we're very, very in a hurry, we want to do a lot of things, but no, why worry? God is in control. Amen. So patience is a very powerful weapon. If only the world, the world don't fight now, more have that patience with one another, it's good. The best security is faith. All right, money can be gone, right? You have a billionaire, your thing can go collapse and bankrupt, etc. One sickness, all oh, your money is gone, no? or one, uh, whatever it is, no? money can go overnight. You put your hope in money, but your security is in, in faith. Faith. Once you have faith, you are secure, no, no matter what happens. Your faith is in God, right? No? God doesn't change. God is there. He's with us. All right. So, and the greatest tonic is laughter. All oh, right, laughter. I just saw, uh, heard before I came in, in, in the news that the, the specialist doctor tells us the, the, the best exercise is laughter. When you, when you laugh, your, all your organs are being used, la, your, your, all your muscles are used, la, your heart, and the endorphins comes out. La, and every part of it, when you laugh, uh, is like an exercise for the heart. It's a cardiac exercise. So the people is happy, they are, they are joyful, uh, it's very powerful medicine. Greatest tonic is laughter. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, this is one of the quotes I, I saw, I thought I want to share with you. Uh, we have a lot of this inside of us right now when we contemplate. All right? Romans 11, look, this is a very important verse. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Think about the knowledge of God. Depth. Think about how, how unsearchable His judgments and his past beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counsellor? Who has ever given to God that we should repay him? Right. And uh, for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Look at, go back and, and think of this verse and, and, and meditate upon the scriptures. The, the depth, okay, we, we want to go deeper this year, deeper in the wisdom of God, the depth and, uh, of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. We want to learn about this God. This God has got so, it's unsearchable. It's beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Do we know the mind of God? We cannot. Uh, the, the infinite, the mind of the Lord. Who has been his counselor? Anybody give God advice? <laughs> Of course, we try and give God advice many times in our prayers. Huh? Uh, who has given God that, that he should repay him? Do we give God so much that he has to repay us? He cannot repay us? No. For from God, from him, through him, and to him are all things. All come from the Lord. He is the source. He is the Alpha and the Omega. So, deeper when in our thinking, in, in, our, in our meditation, and see God. Another translation is NIV. The message translation, the same verse, Romans 11, 33 to 36. Have you ever come on anything quite like this? Extravagant generosity of God. All right. This deep, deep wisdom of God. Sometimes we don't understand why God, you allow this to happen. Why Gaza? Why Israel? Why you have Putin, the Putin guy? Why this, 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 that? Why did this happen? Why our family is like that? Why are we this? Huh? We will ne we it's, it's way over our heads. We will never figure out. 
So many things happen in our life, right? Uh, is there anyone around who can explain God? Can you explain God? What is God like? God is so difficult to explain, right? All right. Uh, anyone smart enough to tell him what to do? <laughs> to counsel God, all right? Uh, advise God. Anyone who has done him such a huge favor that God has to ask his advice. And finally, everything comes from God, everything happens through God, and everything ends up in Him. Wow, I like this. Always glory, always praise. Yes, yes, yes. So I think in, in, in Christianity, it's in the Bible, when we begin to contemplate and think about this, and many upon it, you can see this God. This God that we have is fantastic. He rules the world. He's in control. Every nation, every person in the world, everything comes from Him. Everything happens through Him. He allows it. And everything ends up in Him. He's in control. Always glory, always praise. All right. So we want to explore this here. God, deeper in God, especially, all right? Superficiality is the curse of our age. This is by Richard Foster. Our, our age, we are very superficial. We don't go deep, lah. We, of course, we are, uh, they say religion in Africa is one mile wide and one inch deep. We have a lot of people get converted. Every crusade, same people come and get saved again. But it's one inch deep depth in terms of the... Uh, Discipleship, in terms of their experience with God, they just come and go, come and go, come and go. Every time, get saved, get saved a hundred times, huh? but never go deep. Not stable, always not stable. All right? this, is, this is a problem. Right? Uh, Malaysian Christians are easily shaken. We leave church, no commitment, we are consumers, we seek pleasure and entertainment. A lot of times, this is our, our Christians in Malaysia. During the lockdown, it's a good revelation during the lockdown. <laughs> You see who are really Christians, uh, who are really committed to God. Uh, whether they are just uh, superficial by name only, they go at, 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 in their own pleasure, in their own convenience, and now it's not convenient, difficult, they don't go to church, let's keep this and that. No, no commitment. All right. Uh, they're consumers, like going to the supermarket. Uh. Go and buy things, uh, you buy this, uh, I don't like this so much, I go to another supermarket and go and consume. Oh, they are consumers. You are not thinking of the kingdom, you are not thinking about the local church. You're not thinking about depth and relationship. You don't run away from problems and people. You don't say, when I don't like, don't like my wife, I divorce him, divorce her. You don't, isn't it? It's a commitment. No matter I go shop for another wife. Nonsense. The consumer mentality even in Christians. So we, we go around, uh, pleasure-seeking, entertainment. Which church entertain me better? Oh, this one good luck and dance and jump. Oh, this one got super got special makan. Oh, Allah, makan. This church got this and they, they go here and there. We don't need to go any church. Man. We're in the kingdom. Every church is the same. Right? So, so the, the, the superficiality of Christians right now, we don't have depth of commitment, of relationship. We don't honor the law. We don't seek the will of God. We don't really honor the God's authority that God has given. We just do what we think is right in our lives. So superficiality is what we are trying to overcome. Right? We want to be deep, deeper. Anybody watch this movie yet? Abang Adik. Hey, please go and see. Brother Casey, have you gone? Okay, we we'll go one day. It's, it's a very good movie, all right? Uh, no, our relationship high and by. This, this, this Abang Adik, eh? Abang Adik. Uh, it's deep love for the brother enough to die for him. This too, this is a Malaysian show. Eh? He won a lot of uh, Oscar. Asian Oscar. One of the top among all the Asian, uh, this Abang Ade, Malaysian producer. This, this Abang Ade, uh, Abang is a big brother. He is mute and deaf. He's big brother, mute and deaf. But the Ade, Ade is a naughty guy. He's, he's a naughty guy. He's a younger brother. Gets a lot in, in a lot of trouble. Uh, and then they, 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 they are non-documented workers. No IC. Because of the parents, no matter what happened, I think divorced and then they were left alone. So, so they always have to run again. When the, when the authority comes, they have to run. The, the abang got nothing, zero. But at least the adik got birth certificate. So any, any, anytime, anytime he can still survive. But the abang guy is the poor guy. He got nothing. But he loves the brother so much. He protects the brother. He sacrifices for the brother. And he, I don't tell you all the story. Otherwise, you're gone. 
Is he willing to die for the brother, the abang? Willing to go to jail for the brother, for the sake of the brother? And their love is so, so deep. That love is a, is a good story. It's a good movie. All right? So, I'm talking about relationships that are deep relationships. We don't leave because we cannot get along. We don't divorce because we cannot get along with our wife. We don't change church because we cannot get along. Because that, that relationship is important. Huh? You go to another church, it's the same. Huh? After a little while, you, get, you won't get along. You see? After a little while, you know the true colors. After you get married for many years, also you know the true colors. So if you're not committed to a relationship in depth, we will always have this kind of problem. All right? uh, friendship here today, forgotten tomorrow. The love of many wax go. But in the last day, everybody, chiki ku kiki, Cantonese. Each man for himself only. <laughs> I think of myself only. I don't care about others. I don't care about anybody else. Me and myself and my family, maybe. All right. So this is a, a danger. Uh, likes in the Facebook, how many friends you have in the Facebook, uh, it's gone viral. Now we're all interested in all this kind of superficiality. No really depth of relationship. So we're talking about deeper in relationship. They're willing to die for one another in the body of Christ. Isn't that Jesus said the perfect love, the best love is you are able to die for your brother. Wow, that is tough, you know. Able to accept, able to forgive, able to overlook, able to die. All right, there's depth of relationship. It is in deep solitude, Thomas Burden said, that I find the gentleness with which I can truly love my brothers. It is in deep solitude that I find the gentleness which I can truly love my brothers. So this is the bottom line. We need to love one another. This is one thing we are trying to learn as we grow in the Lord. How can we love each other better? Do we know God or do we know about God? Very often. Uh, we, we know that God is all powerful, He's all knowing, He's all present, He's immutable. We know here, right? God is all powerful, uh, He's omnipotent, He's all knowing, omniscient, He's all present, He's everywhere at the same time, omniscient, and He's also immutable, He never changes. He's consistent, His principles are there. So we all know this theologically. You've heard about this in the church, you preach about it, but do we know it? inside of us all right we only know it intellectually ah we know you're god you're like this but really when we come to really depth to know god this is what we're trying to explore to really know god in that relationship with the lord so scripture verse i think this will be one of my closing look five four to six uh when he had finished speaking jesus he said to simon put on Put out into the deep waters, and the king James launch out into the deep. Put out into the deep water, and let down the nets for a catch. They was they were fishing the whole night, no no catch. But Jesus told Peter, "You you go deeper." And Simon answered, "Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because he says so, I'll let down the nets." And you know the story, right? He had plenty of fish. When they had done so, they caught a, a large number of fish. Then the nets began to break. So Peter, Jesus told Peter, you go deeper. Launch out in the deep. As long as you are in the shoreline, eh? superficial. No fish, right? You know this picture. Eh? Jesus told Peter, you go, go deeper. So the, the, the invitation tonight, for this year 2024, I invite you to go deeper. It's okay? Deeper. Desire. God, I want to know you. I just don't want to know you here. I want to know you inside, inside of me. So the invitation is go, go deeper. Uh, you need to go deeper water for bigger catch, better experience with the Lord. Huh? You, you know, when you go deep sea fishing, you get big fish. Huh? All right? uh, you go snorkeling, you go deep. Right? You see the beautiful the corals, etc. Those are like snorkeling. Huh? Uh, of course, when you go deeper, you need more effort. Huh? You need more money. Huh? More commitment. Uh. Everybody want to mine, mine in the shoreline, uh, in the beach. Enjoy, play, uh, play water. <laughs> but when it goes deeper, you can see a lot of things. So the invitation right now is we want to go deeper in the Lord, right? Uh, uh, they say raising koi fish, koi fish, those, those beautiful Japanese fish. Uh. Why some grow big, others small, all right? Uh, if a koi fish lives in a small tank, you will never grow more than two, three inches, the koi fish. But you put them in a lake, the koi fish can be two, three feet. 
All right. So it's all about us. If we put ourselves in the shoreline, mind, mind, masa, you know, ma, mind, mind, money, or just play the fool, come to church whenever we want. We're not committed. We go here and there. But when we want to go deeper, there is commitment involved in. It is, it is a uh, discipleship involved in. Then you will grow. It's up to you. All right. Nobody can force you. Right. Ah, this is. Uh, I like this this picture. Beautiful. What does the Bible tell us? Deep, call it the deep. Do you think God is a deep person? Is God a deep person? We cannot know God. He's inscrutable. He's so deep. His mind is beyond. We cannot understand Him. He, he's so profound. God is a deep person. And He's calling us deep. Call it the deep. He's calling us. Go deeper with Him. Go inside. Wait, where to go inside? Our heart now. We need to go in any church. It's the same. I tell you, every church is the same. Go deep in the heart because God is in our heart. When we meditate and contemplate and go deep and, and let God be the one who reveal Himself inside of us, the transformation comes from inside us. Not external. No need new church, new structure, new fun. It's inside us. Deep, call it the deep. All right? Uh, the parable of sower, I think it's the last verse. Uh, parable of sower, uh, four types of sower. One is, uh, by the way, wayside, the seeds of wayside, way, way no food. One is a rocky ground. The third one is a thorny ground. And the fourth one is good ground. Okay, the second ground. The second one, uh, rocky ground. The seed one, the rocky ground, uh, he received the word of God with joy and excitement, but temporary. The seed went there, the rocky ground, okay, da, survive. Suddenly he comes out, he's spring, happy, but no roots, no roots, no depth, fall off. After the other while, gelat ready, bought ready, this church no good, go another church. After the other while, bought one, she get bought one because human beings are like that. So there's no root, no depth, no depth of soil. So the, the, the depth is not the church, not the pastor, it's you. God is everywhere the same. The depth is your relationship with God. Because you don't have the depth, wherever you go is the same. All right? So it, it's just rocky soil. There is this no depth because of the soil, the rocky, rocky, there's no root. All right? So this is, this is the problem. All right? So no root, uh, hearer only, but not doer. So you, you can preach till the cow, cows come home. Right? If you don't apply the word of the Lord, no use. All right? Hearer, not doer. So persecution, he falls away. The gospel brings no fruit because he does not obey the gospel. He don't study the word of God nor let it build his foundation. So we will never grow deep if we don't go deep in the word of God. Next week, I'll talk about the word of God. It's important for us to be deep in the word of the Lord. The word of God builds that foundation in our life. All right? So this guy never, never bear forth fruit because he never applies uh, and he never studied the word of the Lord. Conclusion. All right, we're close. COVID-19. Lockdown. 50% of people didn't return to church. Not only in Malaysia, all over the world. Maybe more than 50 even. Uh, every pastor I meet about, oh, yeah, financial problem. Oh, yeah, well, members never come. Oh, yeah, members go to another church. Lah. Now got another new church there, more fanciful. So it's a real, real revelation in COVID-19. Right? It's, a real COVID, it's, a real, it's a real revelation uh, during COVID lockdown. And then the, the res, radical resilience that God gives us. I know we went to a church split in 1993. Uh, and right now also, it's another challenge, right? So, uh, let's rise up. Amen? Let's not give up. Very easy to give up my bunkus clothes off and go home. Huh? Let's not give up. Let's rise up. Let's look. Let's not look and compare and say why lah. Let's not blame also. Right? Nobody is perfect. Maybe they are not perfect. Maybe we are not perfect also. Also, we are not good or not able. Let, let's do, forget about all this. Let's let's really continue on. It's God's church. Let's continue to let it grow. Right? Let let's let go of non-essentials in our life. This is what we want to do in 2024. 2024. This is a very important year for our life. I think this is a, 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 a what do you call it? threshold. It's like a pivotal for our, our life and our ministry. This will be the year where we will determine our future. 
So our desire is, God, we want to grow. All right, and we're going to let go of all non-essentials. Nothing. And we want to grow. We want to grow, me and Taolan. We want to grow, right? We want to let go of things that are non-essential and just focus our life on growth. And the best years of life is 60 to 70. Okay? All right. Matthew is 67. I'm 68. 70, yeah. Brother Choi, yeah. So, 60 to 70, yeah, the most precious years of our life, the, the best years, of, uh, the most fruitful years is 60 to 70. The next one is uh, eight, 70 to 80, lah, right? 70 plus also can. Huh? It's not too bad. All right? So, this is, this is our year. This, this, this year is 69 all right, to 70. So, this is the best years of our life. We want to make a difference. We want to grow. We want to mature. And this is what the excitement of 2024 is you want to grow and let go of non-essentials. What about you? What about you? You have a choice. Next week, I want to talk about deeper in God's Word. Deeper in the Word of the Lord. The Word of God gives revelation. The Word of the Lord, if we bring meditation, transformation, eventually. All right, let's look to God in prayer tonight. Praise God. So I want to invite you tonight. If you would respond to the word of the Lord and say, Yes, Pastor, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to go deeper. I want to commit myself with an attitude of growth. I want to grow. I don't, re- I don't want to remain in the shoreline, the beach. If this is your desire, if God has spoken to you and you want to do that, just raise your hand. I'll pray for you tonight. Yes, praise God. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Okay, wonderful. Anyone else? You think about it? Yes. You feel this is your desire, God, this year? It's going to be a very significant year, 2024. No matter what, God, I'm, I'm, I'm willing. I want to. Take me deeper. Yes. Anyone else? If it's a desire, it's a pastor, you pray for me. I'll pray for you that God will bring all of us deeper. 2024. Okay, just... Keep your hands up. I want to pray for those people with their hands up right now for a little while. God, thank you for these hands raised in Jesus' name. Father, thank you, dear God, that your word has touched them in some ways. Lord, this is their commitment to you. I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, this desire will be fulfilled in this 2024. To go deeper in you, deeper in the word of the Lord, deeper in the love of Jesus, deeper in the things of God, dear God. Lord, bless them. Lord, all the hindrances be broken in the name of Jesus. Obstructions, obstacles, challenges, the things of the world, the, the love of money, uh, the, 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 the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Break them in the name of Jesus. And replace them with desire for you, for, for love of God, or hope in the Lord, and faith in God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God, as a church. As a church for the remaining year, we want to go deeper in you, Lord Jesus. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, O oh God. But we surrender to you. Every hand that have been raised, to dedicate to you. And the rest of the people as well, Lord, they are here tonight. Those that are watching online. You are able to touch their lives. You are able to draw them little by little and grant that desire in their heart, dear God. Father, we give thanks. We praise you. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen.